Let's now look at a graph of the kinetic energy of the escaping electrons from the photoelectric effect. And here's the maximum kinetic energy here on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we're going to plot the frequency of the light. This graph cannot be explained by wave theory. It indicates that light is made of particles, photons. Light is not a wave. This was shown earlier in the chapter. But what do you notice about the graph for low frequencies? And so low frequencies are down this side of the x-axis. At low frequencies, down here, below this cutoff frequency, we notice that no electrons are emitted. But now let's look at light with the frequency greater than this cutoff frequency down here. We'll see that it emits electrons with the maximum kinetic energy. And the higher the frequency, the higher the kinetic energy. But notice, where is the y-intercept of this line right here? Well, let's just extend it here. And we can see that it's intercepting the y-axis at a point less than zero. It's below the x-axis. What do you think that means? It means that not all of the photon's energy went into providing kinetic energy to the electron. Electrons are bound to their atoms in the metal. Remember, we've got the light incident upon a metal. So a minimum amount of energy is required to free them. We call this energy the work function. And the equation for the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electron is Ke max equals HF minus W. Now let's look at what that looks like in terms of our old graphing skills. Y equals MX plus B. M is the slope of the line. Okay, so that's going to be H. B is the y-intercept, which is going to be W. So minus W is the y-intercept of the previous graph. All of the observed properties of the photoelectric effect were explained by Albert Einstein's work. And what's amazing is most people know Einstein for relativity and for writing a letter to President Roosevelt uh, supporting the development of the atomic bomb for World War II, but the only time he received his Nobel Prize was for the photoelectric effect. Moreover, it reintroduced, okay, reintroduced Newton's idea that light was composed of particles. We now have Einstein reintroducing Newton's idea that light was composed of particles and his explanation exactly matched the observable data, which is critical. Now that's great, both for the photoelectric effect and Einstein's career at the time. But now we have various phenomena being explained by assuming that light is a particle and some by assuming that light is a wave. So the question is, what is light really? We're not going to answer that right now. Later on in this chapter, we'll get back to it when we talk about waves and particles. For now, we're going to change it up a little bit and move on to atomic models, which, of course, will lead to some more surprises.